American civilians volunteered by the millions to roll bandages, to learn first aid, to donate blood. The spirit of unity and common purpose may be difficult to comprehend today, but it was real. Almost every American wanted to play some part in the war effort. Five and a half million Americans served as air raid wardens and civil defense workers, diligently preparing for air attacks that never came. More than half a million civilians joined the air warning service to scan the skies for enemy aircraft. Somehow they stayed alert, even though the only planes they ever saw were friendly. This man, along with thousands of other civilian observers, has been trained by army officers to recognize types and sizes of planes by their silhouettes, to record the right information, to report it quickly. And thus, a single flight of planes headed, let us say, for Cleveland would be seen and reported by hundreds of civilians. The blue signal as New York has a daylight test of the new air raid system. Hostile planes approaching, but normal activity may continue, says the long, steady note. The red signal, everybody into doorways and traffic must halt, so commands the wavering siren tone. Times Square in a graphic tryout of the new signal system for eastern states. The blue signal sounds again, normal activity may be resumed, so says the long steady note. It was a kind of a pretty sight with the neons twinkle like little stars and sections like Flatbush and even Staten Island. Well, this here practice is now a memory. We got ourselves a dim on account of the way the ships stand out against our lights. So come six o'clock, Fifth Avenue looks like it was in Hackensack and I wouldn't have believed it. We did it before and we can do it again and we will do it again. We'll knock them over and then we'll get the guy in back of them. We did it before, we'll do it again. The newsreels, with their taste for the outlandish, like to show how anti-aircraft batteries could be camouflaged. There were a lot of them along the West Coast, where people feared a Japanese invasion. After Pearl Harbor, nothing seemed impossible or preposterous. Not even the barrage balloons that rose above California's beaches. In Washington, armed soldiers moved in to guard the government buildings and ring the nation's capital with anti-aircraft batteries. That seemed prudent and appropriate. We did it before and we can do it again and we will do it again. We'll knock them over and then we'll get the guy in back of them. We did it before, we'll do it again. I think that perhaps some of you wish that you might have duty that is at least a little more exciting. I wish that I had duty a little nearer the front. And yet somebody has to do this kind of work. Connecticut was ready for anything. Women of Bridgeport get Thompson submachine gun training. They eagerly respond to Police Chief Wheeler's call. Bridgeport Mayor Jasper McLevy believes the rest of the nation ought to offer similar training to its women folk. nuts off a jeep. In this government cartoon for servicemen, a brooding G.I. learns that the home front is not what he imagines. It is no soft life for his father, his mother, or even his best girl. Technical theory. 
Sorry, voice players. At your service. Okay, Snafu. Maybe you got something there. Brace monkeys, but it's cold. Now let's take a look at the lazy, wazy home folks. Suppose we look at your old man first. could have predicted how quickly and aggressively America would switch from a peacetime to a wartime economy. Certainly not Germany or Japan. challenge of war. American factories have achieved the impossible. American mass production is delivering the goods. Going first to the great automobile assembly lines, capable of turning out four million trucks and passenger cars a year, United States engineers harnessed the skill, mobilized the resources of the most efficient manufacturing system in the world. Peacetime construction was halted. Overnight, Tons of machinery and hundreds of plants were hauled away for the duration by workmen converting to war. Where automobile fenders once were made, aircraft propellers are turned out by the thousands. Where watch cases and compacts once were made, now shell cases by the millions. Assembly lines of machine guns moving to war on the same conveyors that only yesterday carried American typewriters. Ladies' lipsticks surrender to war needs that small arms ammunition may be sped to the front. Only coordinated mass production can turn out anti-aircraft guns at the present staggering rate. And this is only the beginning. Only in plants like these could such a gigantic job of production be achieved overnight. This is industrial America at war. The arsenal of democracy delivering the goods.